I saw the prequel to Dunkirk, everybody. It was kind of epic. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome back to Your Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zach Snyder. If you're new around here on Yen, we pull from every corner of nerd culture to talk about anything and everything that piques my interest. We're finally here. The last Best Picture nominee of the year. We're going to talk about it today and then tomorrow. We're going to rank all of them from Joker to Best. I don't personally have a history with war films. I saw Dunkirk a couple of years ago because it was a Best Picture nominee and it was a pretty cool experience in theaters, but I haven't rewatched it since. So when it comes to 1917, it's not a film that I would have gone out of my way to watch unless it was nominated for this award. So with that being said, I did see it in theaters, but let's go talk about the ins and outs of it because it, it did end up being kind of epic. In your own time, gentlemen. Must be something big if the channel's here. If you don't know anything about it, 2019's 1917, that's a lot of numbers, is a British war film directed by Sam Mendes and starring George McKay and Dean Charles Chapman. Set on the day of April 6, 1917, two young British soldiers are given the difficult task of carrying a message across no man's land to call off a scheduled attack that would cost the lives of 1,600 men. 1917 was also nominated for Best Cinematography, Best Visual Effects, Best Sound Mixing, Best Sound Editing, Best Director, Best Original Music Score, Best Original Screenplay, Best Makeup and Hairstyling, and Best Production Design. From the very get-go, I will say that I enjoyed 1917 as an experience first and foremost, and that has a lot to do with the camera work. Thanks to Roger Deakins, 1917's greatest achievement is its cinematography. The entire film looks like it is all done in one shot. There's very few films that have ever actually attempted to be shot in one take or edited to appear that way, and even fewer films that have actually succeeded. I have seen Alejandro Inarito's Birdman and Gaspar Noé's Enter the Void, and I love both of those for very wildly different reasons, but one of their strongest qualities are their one-shot aesthetic. Fortunately, I'm glad to say that, at least in the visuals, 1917 joins those same ranks. There are a ton of breathtaking moments in this film that are genuinely epic. When the main character finds his way into a burning village in France late at night, I've honestly not seen many scenes in any films more beautiful than this. Mixed with this strange and ethereal soundtrack by Thomas Newman, I was just amazed at what this film had accomplished. Sam Mendes had completely swept me away and immersed me into this war scene that it almost felt like I was watching a two hour video game cutscene. And unfortunately, that's both a positive and a negative. It's a positive because just like any really great video game, its visuals and sounds make me interested in this world. I wanted more from it. But this isn't a video game, this is a film. This made me want to play a video game. And so while I was sitting in the theaters and epic stuff was happening on screen, I was super invested. But when I was sitting in the theaters and characters were talking, I, I, I well, I fell asleep. I, I mean, I was tired because I'd been up late the night before, but uh, I literally fell asleep during most of the first 30 minutes of this film. It wasn't until the action started to ramp up a bit that I actually became more invested in the story and the world. Honestly, this is uncommon for me because I'm much more of a story over action guy, but we've only got two main characters throughout this film and there were times where they're just talking and walking for upwards of 10 minutes and I was just bored. Again, this is all supposed to be one shot, so it's not like we can just cut away either. There's limitations on something this risky and overall I think that the risk worked I mean, later on, there's a scene where the main character finds a group of soldiers he was looking for, and they move the character in such a way that we get multiple angles while someone is talking, and it's clever, it's visually interesting. But then there's like just these two homies at the beginning talking and walking, and like I said, I fell asleep. It's boring to look at. So that's my main conflict with 1917. On one hand, Watching it in theaters was a great experience. I'm glad I had the opportunity to, and I'd recommend the film on the visuals and soundtrack along. On the other hand, I don't know if I'll ever rewatch this because the story is very lackluster. I like the two main characters here, but it was the limitations of the one shot that definitely affected my enjoyment with the screenplay 
rather than working with it. With that said, taking on a task like this is incredibly difficult and I fully commend everyone who worked on this film. I definitely say that some of these nominations were well deserved. Mendez for Best Director isn't one of my favorite directors of the year, but it's not a bad choice either. Roger Deakins winning cinematography made complete sense, even if I am a little upset that The Lighthouse didn't win it. I'd even agree with the sound categories, the music score and production design. Screenplay was the weirdest nomination to me, considering it being the weakest part of 1917 by far. It also won Best Visual Effects, and I mean, sure, I, I really don't care, like, there really wasn't anything good in that category. And, and let's be honest, I don't care about the makeup and hair category at all, so whatever, sure. But as far as its Best Picture nominee, I can easily go back and forth here. There's a few films that I enjoyed way more than 1917 this year, so it's sad to me that those didn't get the nomination instead. However, there's clearly some amazing craftsmanship here, and I couldn't discredit that at all. So while this is not nearly my first choice for a nomination, I'm at least glad that I got the chance to watch it, and I'd recommend at least checking it out, especially if you're into war films. But that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If for a reason you didn't like it, you can hit the dislike button. Let me know down in the comments though, what are your thoughts on 1917? Did you like it? Did you hate it? What are your thoughts on war films? Are there any big ones that I should check out? Because I am very, very new to the genre. Maybe some that I would enjoy more with good characters rather than characters just walking and stuff. Also, we're close to a thousand subscribers. I really think we can make that milestone this year. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. In the meantime, thank you again so much for watching and I will see you next time on Your Everyday Nerd. Goodbye.